Good morning. So good to see all of you here today. Glad to have you here on this first Sunday after Easter. If you will look at the back of the bulletin, you will see um, a list of activities. This week we are back to normal. Um, there are committees meeting. Um, uh, one of the circles is meeting in person here this week and various and sundry things going on. So look at those activities and be um, at the things that um, that you are a part of. Uh, Beth McHenry Pope has a moment for mission for us today. Good morning, church family. I say that because I think of you as my family and then that won't be nervous up here talking, but I probably will be. I'm here to talk about Sunday school. And this year we have three adult classes to choose from and they are not uh, divided by age, so don't think that you have to go to a certain one. Feel free to choose whichever one you wish. Adult three is going to be continued by Chuck Morgan, and then that will meet in the library. Adult two will be led by Margot Strickland, and they are in the fellowship hall. And adult one class will be led by Dee Dee Pope, and she will be in the room next to the library. Okay, and all of these classes will have books and or videos to review and discuss. And so I want you to remember to uh, visit each one if you want and make your own decision. Now the small children will meet in the pink room downstairs and the leaders are Molly Teague and Chris Walraven. Our special studies class this year led by Roy Thomas We'll meet upstairs in the blue room with the clouds. Okay. And these classes will be doing Bible stories, crafts, and they will learn some new songs. So if you would like to go and help them, that would be fun too. <clears throat> we are still in need of leaders for our youth. A rotation method of sharing the leadership would work if you would like to do it, but not every Sunday. Uh, the leaders can be supplied with curriculum, or you can do your own thing. The group will meet in the annex, and if you are interested in taking this Sunday, please let me know. We start Sunday school at 10 o'clock, and we may begin around the coffee pot soon, so please sign up for that when the time comes. But I just want to welcome everyone back to Sunday school. We are so excited to be back. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. We had a good attendance in Sunday school this morning, and I want to remind you, if you have not been coming, there are several classes that you can choose from. The psalmist calls us to worship. Make a joyful noise of the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let us worship God. I invite you to join me in saying the opening prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our guide and guardian, you have led us apart from the busy world into the quiet of your house. Grant us grace to worship you in spirit and in truth, to the comfort of our souls and the upbuilding of every good purpose. Enable us to do more perfectly the work to which you have called us, 
so that we may worship you in this hour, not with our lips, but in word and deed all the days of our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, we pray. Amen. may be seated while the kids come to the front for the children's time. We got some kiddos today. Hey Ashley, we haven't seen Ashley in a long time. So good to see you. Y'all sit down. <laughs> well Will, your mask is a little big. Annabelle's not coming? Well, I hope that you see that Michael and I have provided you with all the kids. My, and, and Ashley, my children, my grandchildren, and his, there's Annabelle. We need Annabelle up here. She's our talker. We need her. What's your favorite thing to do? It, uh, just, it, what is it that you really, really like doing? Yes, ma'am. Ride her bike and swim. Those are good things. Play with your brother. Whoa. Sterling, do you like to play with your brother? Not so much. I knew the answer to that. Okay, what's your favorite, Annabelle? What do you like to do? Riding your motorcycle. And playing what? Minecraft. Minecraft. Oh, okay. All right, Emma, what do you like to do? Uh, eat, at eat at restaurants. My kind of girl. <laughs> I like to eat at restaurants too. We haven't done it much, but. Okay, Mr. Will, what do you like to do? Play Minecraft and watch TV. Yeah, with me. I like Minecraft. You like Minecraft too? I know. <laughs> Just like you. You like Minecraft too? Okay. Well, guess what the disciples like to do? Jesus followers. Do you know what they like to do? No. We have a story about that today. Mm -hmm, we do. Well, and interestingly enough, what they like to do, I guess, was also their job. They like to fish. Do you like to fish? You were just about to say that? Well, good. Do you like to fish? I know. 
I don't like to fish. Some people do. Like, you like fishing? You know, I usually bring something to show, kind of a show and tell. I decided maybe a rod and reel was a little much. Although, y'all have little bitty fishing poles, don't you? Do you have a little fishing pole? She uses a big one, okay. Okay, you use a big one too? Pocket. He put a fish in her pocket. If Annabelle was here, she is the children's sermon. <laughs> put a fish in Emma's pocket. Yeah, and I got the biggest fish. You did. Good. Well, let me tell you about the disciples. They love to fish. And so one time after Easter, Peter said, Okay, let's, let's, I'm just going to go fishing. Because you know what? They had kind of taken a vacation from fishing. They had done something else for three years. They had followed Jesus. And they missed fishing. And Peter said, I'm going to go fishing. And they all said, okay, well, we'll all go fishing too. And they went fishing and they caught a bunch of fish. And then Jesus came. They were on the, on the shore by the banks, by the water. And Jesus cooked breakfast. Wasn't that nice? He cooked breakfast, and they had fish that morning for breakfast. That was one of their favorite things to do, but also their favorite thing to do was see Jesus. That was one of the favorite things, too. Okay, well, fishermen and women, let's pray. We thank you, God, that you have taught us in your word and that you have taught us to be your followers, to do the things that you would do. Help us to be fishers of men. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. They haven't done this in so long, they forgot the routine. We come to the time of confession on Sunday morning because God gives us a chance to start all over again. First day of a new week, the beginning of a new day, because God has offered us forgiveness if we will but confess, we have a chance to begin again. We will sing our prayer of confession this morning, dear Lord and Father of mankind. You will find that on page 169. And we will sing verses 1, 4, and 5. <clears throat> Please take a few moments in silent confession.
We make these confessions in the name of Jesus Christ, the forgiving Lord, and for his sake, amen. God's word of pardon for you today is this. Thus says the Lord, do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Friends, this is the good news of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Let us pray. Open now our ears that we may hear, and our minds that we may understand, and wills that we may be doers of your word and not hearers only. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is taken from the 21st chapter of John, one of the post-resurrection appearance stories. I invite you to listen to the word of God as it comes to your life today. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana of Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of the disciples. And Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. And they said to him, We will go with you. And they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? And they answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes, for he was naked, and he jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. And Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And he said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. And Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you that when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you, take you where you do not wish to go. 
He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God, and after this he said to him, follow me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me again in prayer. Let the words of my mouth, meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock, our strength, our redeemer. Amen. There's just something to be said for routine. I don't know about you, but I'm a very routine person, and quite frankly, I like my routine, and I thank you not to mess with it. I know I'm not the only one here. I like my routine. As much fun as it is to put up the Christmas tree, don't you just like taking it down? Taking it down and putting the house back the way it was before. And as much as I like going on vacation, I think that's a lot of fun. I like coming home more. Can't wait to get home. There's just something to be said about routine. Fred Craddock, one of my favorite preachers and authors, said, After Thanksgiving, there's nothing better than a big old bowl of red beans and rice and cornbread. There's something to be said about routine. Peter wanted nothing more than to go back to the routine. They had had three years of watching Jesus heal the sick, raise the dead, make the lame walk, the blind to see, heard him preach. They'd had three years. But that last week, that last week of Jesus' life was more than they could handle. They had never seen Jesus angry before, but he turned over the tables in the temple, had many conversations with the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees, but he had a whole day of controversy in the temple. They met in the upper room for the Passover feast, and it was completely different. Jesus washed their feet. And then he took what they knew as the Passover meal, and he made something completely different out of that. And then there was the Garden of Gethsemane, and Peter cut off the ear of the soldier, and then Jesus was arrested. And, and when it was all over, when it was all over, Peter just wanted red beans and rice. Can't we just get back to the routine? And so he mentioned to the other disciples, you know, I think I'm just going to go fishing. And they were all too glad so they all went. Let's just get back to the routine. Get back to normal. I will have to say one of the things about getting back to normal that I love the most is seeing you out there. And don't we just long to get back to normal? I don't care if I ever wear another mask for the rest of my life. I just want to go to the restaurant and eat with Emma. Just get, get back to normal. But as much as we want to get back to normal, can you imagine the way they felt? Just get the routine back. So they went fishing. It's what they knew to do. Well, Bible scholars decided a long time ago that the 21st chapter of John was added on. The early church added the 21st chapter, and it's pretty clear if you go back and read the last verses of chapter 20, here's the last verses of chapter 20, now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through his believing in him, you may have life. 
Well, that seems to be an end. And then it starts all over again. The disciples decide to go fishing. So the big question has always been, why did the early church decide they needed one more chapter? Did they just not like the way John ended that? Thought maybe he could have done better? Maybe they just needed one more resurrection appearance, just one more resurrection story. Most people think that it was added to give Peter, as they say today, a chance for closure. They just wanted to give Peter a chance to, to be right. They wanted to give Peter a chance to start all over again with the master that he had, de he had denied three times, hence three times, do you love me? Well, whatever the reason is, we don't know. We don't know why the early church decided to add that 21st chapter, but I for one am glad they did. Because there's a word for me here. And maybe there's a word for you here. Maybe there's a word of a chance to start all over again. I think we probably would all agree that we have not just blatantly, like Peter, denied Christ three times in a row. I never knew that man. I never knew that man. We would probably all agree, well, you know, I've, not, I've never done that. I've never said, no, not me. I'm not a Christian. Oh, Lord, forbid, I'm, I'm not a Presbyterian. But how many ways have we denied Christ? So I, for one, am glad that the 21st chapter was added. Maybe give us a chance like Peter. Do you love me? We all know love is not a word. It is a word. Love is more than a word. Love is action. You can tell someone you love them till the cows come home. But if your actions say something differently in the words of Paul, you're sounding brass and tinkling cymbals. Peter, do you love me? Diane, do you love me? Feed my sheep. I'm glad this chapter was added on because it has a word of forgiveness. And I'm glad this chapter was added on because it gives us a chance to show that we love God. And I don't know what feed my sheep means to you. That could take a lot of different forms. I don't know what that means to you. I just know what it means for me. So the question is, do you love me? Some people say Peter could have said, I don't like yes or no answers. Do you love me? Feed my sheep. And only you can decide what that means. Amen and amen. Please stand and we will say together what we believe about God by saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Third hell, the third day he arose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
people for whom we pray every week, you'll find on the back of the bulletin. Stephanie told me just before worship this morning that her brother has come home but is in hospice care, so we will remember Guy. Please take a few moments to pray silently, and then we will pray together. Let us pray. This is a prayer by Walter Brueggemann. We know about pits and snares and depths. We know about silence and absence and abandonment. We know about passionate asking and eager insistence. But we also know about the silence of shame and the darkness of guilt and the terror of resentment. We know about long nights of outer controlled anxiety. When we are our true selves, even if we are not our best selves. We know some of us often, many of us seldom, about the break of day when the night is broken. When speech breaks the silence, compassion overrides our shame, healing outweighs our hurt, forgiveness overrides our resentment. We do not know how it is that you break the night. We do not know why it is that you harvest our silence into presence. We only know that in the long night you hover over us until daybreak and we find every new dawn is Easter all again. And we know that speech. He is not here. He is risen. We confess, O oh God, our nights of anxiety, <clears throat> our days of doubt, our times of fear, but we also acknowledge that, acknowledge that during the night of anxiety, doubt, and fear, your presence has never left us. In the words of the psalmist, I will not fear, for thou art with me. So we come today to thank you for your presence, for your Easter dawn that breaks in on us every day, the chance we have new every morning because of your faithfulness. We pray for these whom we love, others whom we have named in silence, for our country and for our leaders. We pray for our church as we are experiencing a time of beginning again. Help us more than ever now to have a renewed, a renewed vision of what it means to feed your sheep. Hear us as we have prayed in silence, and hear us as we pray together the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
I look forward to seeing some of you this week. We had our first in-person Wednesday night Bring Your Own Supper this past week. I think we had 13 in attendance and maybe five or six um, that watched on Zoom. Our attendance will immediately go up when I tell you that Ruth Penny Bell has promised a chocolate cake. If you can't get them there with seven deadly sins, you can get them there with you can get them there with gluttony. That's not the sin this week, by the way. All that is to say, we had a great time, and it was just so good to be back together. So I look forward to seeing more of you on Wednesday night. Depart now in the fellowship of God the Father, and as you go, remember. In the goodness of God, you were born into this world. By the grace of God, you've been kept all the day long, even to this very hour. By the love of God, fully revealed in the face of Jesus Christ, we are even now being redeemed. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you on this day and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>